So this one's going to be kind of short. I saw ExxonMobil trending earlier. And uh, the reason it was trending uh, really fucking pissed me off. Because it's getting, like, points for withdrawing support for Russian oil and trying to transfer its Russian assets to a different uh, company so that they can no longer be said to support Russian oil. And um, if it's not obvious how terrible that is, you don't know what ExxonMobil is responsible for. But here's a quick rundown, and you can watch uh, the four videos that Jake Tran did on uh, these companies as well uh, in order to find out more uh, if you want to. Like, it's got good inroads for personal research. But I just wrote down some notes here. Shell was a French Rothschild joint, which started as Caspian and Black Sea Petroleum Company and went on to become Royal Dutch Shell Company. Then they polluted and destroyed Nigeria and massacred the protesters, among other human rights abuses, like hanging nine prominent protesters. They did that, yeah. <laughs> so... BP worked with a death squad to brutally torture a union activist and a variety of other people. They started off as the Anglo-Persian oil company, treating exploited Iranians like shit. Then the British government bought controlling shares in the company, and things only got worse. They deposed the Shah of Iran after people started demanding better conditions and after the Shah was working with the Germans. Uh, because, you know, it's not okay to work with the, with the Germans, right? Or, you know, any other sort of foreign fascist. Texaco helped Mussolini in Italy and Franco in Spain and then went on to poison Ecuador. Oh, and by the way, the guy who ran the joint loved the Nazis. He was a Nazi sympathizer. Uh, killing tens of thousands and punitively jailing activists. This is in Ecuador, which they poisoned, who tried to hold them accountable. Now they're Chevron, and even though they lost the suit, they're trying to weasel out of paying. ExxonMobil fucked over Indonesia by employing the military to protect its operations, which were polluting there too, and ripping off the country from most of the crude value, which resulted in mass human rights abuses and more. And then, as a nice little cherry on top here, Shell, ExxonMobil, and BP all helped install and maintain uh, the Oman dictatorship real early on, by backing the Jebel Akhtar War, a ton of people died, and there were more human rights abuses, obviously. So now these companies, who did this at a baseline, and whose operations <coughs> have been directly responsible for uh, the West's involvement in the War on Terror, which is basically the war of terror because they fund terrorists a, a, a lot of the time, including Al-Qaeda, who started off as Mujahideen funded through the Operation Cyclone funding. Um, and, you know, a variety of uh, other things. You know, like, the West loves human rights abuses for oil. They love war for oil. They love blood for oil. And they love to suppress uh, protests that get in the way of their oil. So, 
let's be super clear here and say that this is a repeated and sort of endemic pattern that's not going anywhere just because they don't work with Russia anymore. I mean, it's it's weird to me that I have to say this to a bunch of alleged liberals, but don't just assume that people who are against Russia are pro-freedom or democracy or human rights, and don't let people rehabilitate their image. Because I saw a lot of that today. I saw a lot of people being like, yeah, they're getting away from Russia. That's awesome. But what are they really doing? They're selling a part of their business. Yeah, sure, that means that they're not going to get profit from that part of their business. But you know what it also means? It also means that they're not giving anything up, really. They're still getting a cash out and improving their image, letting their image rehabilitate. But ultimately, are you going to let that happen? Are you going to let these people walk away from what they've done? Because if that's the case, how is the West any better than Russia? And if it's not, why shouldn't they just shut the fuck up about it? That's my question. Is The West is hugely guilty of a wide variety of human rights abuses. Why is it that they're so susceptible to these boogeymen that they will say that as long as you get away from Russia, you're suddenly on Team Awesome? Hmm? It shouldn't be that way. It's evil that it is that way. But that's the way it is. How many people have died because of U.S. involvement in dirty wars in the Middle East and Africa? A fucking shit ton. Or just proxy wars. Like the one that they're running uh, through Saudi Arabia in Yemen. You know? Wh why... Why, oh why, is Saudi Arabia not considered on a similar level to Russia to these people? Well, because, my whys have been all rhetorical, by the way, in case you didn't know, because that's where the West gets their fucking moral standing from, is pretending that they're not just as bad. They just... Pretend that they don't do all of this stuff that Russia is allegedly doing by, you know, rote, by knee-jerk. It's not just their impulse response to be corrupt, brutal, evil, murderous, terrible people. But it is, and it always has been. That's why the U.S. had no problem doing business with Nazis post-World War II. Because the Galen Organization and the multiple high-ranking NATO Nazis, that just went with the territory of going against Russia. And as long as you're going against Russia, you can do whatever the fuck you want. No matter how unethical it is. Right? I just, I hate it. I hate the moral grandstanding. I hate the fake-ass attitudes like the West is somehow awesome. No, it isn't. These oil companies are corrupt and evil regardless of whether or not they support Russia. And this shouldn't rehabilitate their image into anything more than it already is. These people are corrupt motherfuckers. Don't ever forget it. Because if you do, you are one step further away from smashing the fucking state.